Hello everyone, my name is Sanjeev. In this video, I will demo how to send MuleSoft application log to Splunk in Runtime Fabric. I have installed the Runtime Fabric abc-eks-rtf-log-test in Amazon EKS Kubernetes cluster and uh, its status is uh, active. Health status is also healthy. And here is the endpoint. So deployed application will get a domain name starting with this URL. For the Splunk instance, we can register to the cloud platform trial. And here is the link. So I have already registered and created the Splunk platform cloud trial account. But uh, in your case, you will get a form here and you can fill that information and you will also get the email with the instance URL, the Splunk platform URL and user password. Once you receive the Splunk platform URL, you can log into that uh, URL using user and password. So here is my Splunk platform URL and it's a platform cloud trial account. So let me log into this uh, URL. I have already logged into this account. Here uh, we need to add the HTTP event collector. So for that we need to go to the settings, data inputs and here you can select the HTTP event collector. I have already created a event collector, HTTP event collector named mule log. I have provided most of the values as a default value, but uh, for source type, I selected log4j and for allowed indexes, I selected main and uh, default index is also main and all other values are default. So for this HTTP event collector, I have a source type log4j index main. It will be by default enabled or you can go to the global setting and you can enable it here. And this is the token that you will get it when you add the HTTP event collector. We will use this token when we configure the log4j.xml file in Mule application. So I have created a Mule application named log demo app and here I am using one HTTP listener path is slash test and it's logging flow exited I am showing from the end backward and then I am logging the payload and payload I am setting here message successful this is the response of this uh, resource slash test and here I'm logging start processing and processing is trivial. I'm only setting the message, message success. And here I'm printing the payload that we received to this HTTP listener because I saved in variable. So I'm printing from the variable. So this is a ticket payload and here is the payload that I will send from postman or when I will call this application. Here I'm logging flow entered and here I'm just only setting the payload to the payload dash bar. This is a just a simple flow. Its resource path is a slash test and I'm putting multiple logger so we can see the multiple logs in the Splunk UI. We talked about step one and step two. We configured the HTTP event collector then Next, we need to update the log4j configuration. So for that, I have uh, replaced the configuration element with this. You can see here, let me open the log4j file. So here, instead of just uh, configuration, I have copied this uh, all line. I just copied it. It was previously just a configuration. Next, we need to add the Splunk appender. 
So I edit this appender, Splunk appender. So you can see that this is the what I already appended here. I already added the Splunk appender here. Its name I gave Splunk and uh, for the source it's values environment dot app name. So this will be the name of the deployed application and host I'm giving the pod name where the application will be deployed. So name of the pod will be assigned to the host. Here I'm providing URL, this is same URL that we got it here when we registered for a Splunk Cloud Platform Trial account. And uh, this is the URL that I'm providing here. And the token, when we added the HTTP event collector, we got the token. So this is the token that I'm using there, right here. And then, for index, I'm using main because here we set it the index main here. Here we just disabling the certificate validation. And this is the log. So this is a Cloud Hub style log. So that's what uh, we are using here. And I copied this uh, from here from the Mule documentation. So I have taken the Splunk appender from here and that's what I was modifying in the log4j.xml file in my application. Then I have added the this Cloud Hub appender as well, but it's optional, but I have added here. And at the end, under the logger, I have added the Splunk and Cloud Hub under the Splunk root at uh, info level. So this is the change that I have done in the log4j configuration. I provide the appender reference under the async root logger. I also added the Splunk appender in log4j. For pom.xml, we have to add this repository so I have already added that repository, you can see here. So we'll go under repository. And here I have added the repository. And that information I also got from here. So this is a, I am adding repository. This all detail is provided uh, in the Mule documentation. And then we need to add the one dependency for the Java logging, Splunk library Java logging, and that's what we added here. So this is the second part, a dependency in the pom.xml, and I have added this in here under dependencies. So this is the dependency I have added. So this is the two place I changed the pom.xml. This is all the changes that I have done in the Mule application. Now we need to change the secret, Kubernetes secret, that's a custom properties we have to change. That's a OPEX secret. We have to update the value from uh, false to true. So we need to enable the custom log. We have to set to the true from the false. By default, custom log J enabled is set to false. And this is the base64 value of false and this is base64 value of true. So we need to set the base60 value of true for this uh, data value and that is under this secret. So we are going to edit this secret. So let's uh, copy this command. So here is the value right now. This is a uh, base64 value of false need to replace with the base 60 value of true a string true so i will copy that value from here and i'm going to replace it so i'm going to replace the value of this custom underscore log 4j underscore enabled and i'm setting this to the true and this is the base 64 value of a string true control s to save it 
and I will close this file. And here you can see that this uh, secret custom properties has been edited. Now we need to restart the pod. So we need to restart the agent pod. For that, we will uh, run this command. This will uh, restart the deployment and uh, deployment name is agent. So our pod is related to this deployment, agent deployment. So I'm going to restart this uh, deployment that will restart the runtime fabric agent pod. So let me run this to start the runtime fabric agent pod. So deployment has been uh, restarted. Now we need to restart the application as well. So for that, I will add a so this is the application that I was showing here. So this is the application I exported it using this command file export. So I exported this uh, application and then I deployed it here and it's deployed on a uh, runtime fabric ABC EKS RTF dash log dash test. Now I'm going to restart this application for that. What I will do, I will just add a uh, one dummy property just to restart it. So I will say key one value one. This is just a way to restart it. So I can make a change here and then I can get this button enabled. But uh, you can use any other way to restart this application. Eventually we need to restart the application. So I'm applying changes. So log demo API has been restarted. Now we can invoke this application. So I'm going to use the curl command and here I will use the resolve option and I'm going to resolve this uh, log-api.abc.com port 80 to this uh, IP address. And this IP address, I got it uh, using this uh, resolve DNS name for the inbase uh, nginx controller url so i'm going to copy this url and i'm going to invoke the application and here i'm calling the post method and i'm sending the json value as a payload and let me show you the payload first this is the json data that i'm going to send in the post call id price and type so this is I'm passing using dash dash json and providing the file name that contains the post payload. I'm going to invoke the log dash api dot abc dot com slash test. Test is the path and this is the URL that we got uh, here for the domain name. So I'm invoking the post method and sending this payload. Okay, we got the response message success and that's what we have here. Message success. So now we will go to the Splunk and we will search this log. And let's see, we got the logs in uh, Splunk or not. So I will go to the Splunk Cloud, search and reporting. And here I will search for source type log4j. And we got the some log here. So this is a 30 minute uh, ahead in the minutes part only. So here I am on a 9.02 p.m. So minutes part is 02. We just uh, invoked the mule application one minute before. That's why it's uh, coming on 31. So this is a log that we just invoked it. And here is the flow exited. Then we are getting message successful. And here starting process. And here we are getting the JSON payload that we are sending to the application. 
and here is the flow entered and that's what we are printing here flow exited payload and that is this payload and then uh, starting process and i'm just printing this is a ticket payload i'm and printing the payload that i'm sending here this one and at the beginning flow entered so you can observe this is right now 903 so in minute part you will get a new log at a 33 or 34 because i'm going to invoke it again so let's invoke one more time So right now it is still 903. So we will get a new log at 333 and something in second. So let me search it. So we got the log at 333 because we invoked a in minute part on 03 and this is 30 minute ahead. So we are getting the same sequence again. Flow exited and uh, this is a message and then here is the starting process and this is the payload ticket payload that i'm sending and uh, here is a flow entered and you can see that we are printing here host this is a pod name because here we provided the environment colon pod name and our pod name for this application we can find out what it is so for that i will run this command kubernetes get namespace so we'll find out the namespace of the application this is the namespace where application has been deployed so let me get the pod name Let me copy the namespace. So this is the pod name where application has been deployed. So let me copy this and search it here on this page, control F. So this is the pod where application is deployed. That's what is printing for the host value and everywhere that's what is printing. And for source, this is the application name. That's what we provide here. App name, environment, colon app name. And so it is taking this app name value from here. This one. And that's what it is printing. This one. Source type, we have log4j. That's what we provided here. Here in HTTP event collector, when we created event collector, we provided the index main and the source type as a log4j that's why we are getting source type as a log4j this is how we can send the mule application log to the splunk in runtime fabric here we are using http event collector to send the log to the splunk and we configure this uh, http event collector in our uh, log4j appender using uh, this appender here we are providing URL and then we also supporting that using change in the pom.xml by providing the repository and dependency and by default runtime fabric custom log enabled is false we have to make it uh, true then we have to restart the agent pod and once we restart the agent pod and we restart the application we are able to successfully send the log to the Splunk here. This is all in this video. If you like this video, click the like button and please subscribe the channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.